Hello, my name is Randa Lopez Morgan, and I am the Events and Programming Librarian at LSU, as well as the liaison to the College of Agriculture. Doing research for your papers can be super frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. So what can I do to help? I can help you find sources for your papers, I can teach you how to use the databases or why you aren't finding anything when you do your search, and help with your citations. I can also help you create a research game plan where we sit down and figure out the best words to use for your search. Language is 90% of the search process. If you don't have the right words, you won't find what you're looking for. What don't I do? I cannot write your papers. You don't want me to do that. And I can't tell you if your paper is good or not. The CXC Writing Center is available for all of your paper writing needs. They do a great job and I highly recommend making an appointment with them if you need help. Today we will be using the NFS 4021 Contemporary Topics and Nutrition Research Guide as our starting spot. The best way of getting to this guide is by logging into your MyLSU, selecting Library Resources on the left-hand side of the page, and then LSU Libraries homepage. From there, we will select a research guide in the middle of the page and scroll down to NFS 4021. This guide might also be linked in your Moodle. On this first page is information about tutorials and interlibrary loans. We can't possibly own everything that's ever been published, so if you need to get access to a journal or book that we don't have, this service is free for you to use. Please don't pay for those journal articles. ILL is taking a bit longer than normal because of the pandemic, but it's traditionally pretty fast. If you need a copy of a book, it can take up to two weeks to get it, and it also depends on if the library that owns it is open right now. This is why it is so important to not wait until the last minute to put your request in. The second tab covers original research versus review papers and why you need to know the difference and how you can tell them apart. Some of this may sound familiar to you and that's awesome. Some of this will be brand new and that's okay too. Just remember, I am here if you have questions. A research article is a primary source. It reports the method and results of an original study performed by authors. A review article is a secondary source or an article that's writing about or summarizing other articles. It does not report on original research of its own. A research article will be reporting on something new like a clinical trial, experiment, or survey, while review articles do not. However, review articles are important because this is how we find the best practices and gaps in the literature. They can also be great overviews of existing literature on a topic, and because it synthesizes the information already out there, it can be super helpful when first learning about your topic. For your papers, however, you will need original peer-reviewed articles, and sometimes review articles are tricky and can look like original research. A research article will always follow the same format. There will be an introduction that gives an overview about what the topic is and why it's important, a methods section where the author describes how they collected and analyzed their data, a results section that describes the outcome of the data, sometimes charts and graphs are included, a discussion section where the authors will explain their interpretation of the results and theorize on their importance, and a reference or work cited. These are the sources that the author used when writing their papers. A review article will not always follow the same format. Let's take a look at two examples. This is an original research article. Dietary beliefs and eating patterns influence metabolic health and type 2 diabetes, a clinical-based study in urban North India. We can see from the record what journal this comes out of, the date, authors, including an email address, and if we click on the PDF on the left-hand side of the page, there are some great indicators of why this is an original research article. The first thing it says is original article at the top of the page. If we look at the abstract, which is the brief overview of the article, it has all the sections labeled. We can see it has a background or introduction, method section, results, and a conclusion. If we scroll to the end, we can see the references. If we look at the review article example, state of the evidence regarding behavior change theories and strategies in nutrition counseling to facilitate health and food behavior change, we can see the journal, date, and volume are just like the first example. We can also see authors. Just by looking at it right away, it isn't necessarily clear what type of article this is, and if you're in a rush, you might be tricked. However, if I open this article by clicking Full Text from Science Direct, at the top of the page it says Research, Review. If I look at the abstract, it doesn't have any of the formatting an original research article should have. If I read a bit further, it even says, The American Dietetic Association Evidence Analysis Library Nutrition Counseling Work Group conducted a systematic review of peer-reviewed literature related to behavior change theories and strategies used in nutrition counseling. This is a review article. Now, it will have a works cited or reference section. However, the other great thing about review articles is that they often cite original research, and sometimes you can use these sources for your papers. 
Don't be tripped up by review articles. They will say somewhere in the introduction, abstract, or sometimes even in the title, review. And if it doesn't have the introduction, background, methods, results, discussion sections, it's not original research. Our next tab is databases. However, I'm going to scroll down to quickly talk about mesh terminology. The human language is vast. We have so many different ways of describing one thing. Take this can of Coke. Is it a Coke? A soda? A pop? Fizzy drink? Doesn't it depend on where you're from? How do we describe someone over the age of 65? Elderly? Senior? Old? Because we have such a large vocabulary when doing our search, it can be difficult to find the right words. This is a vital issue in research, but more importantly in the medical field, which is why the National Library of Medicine has developed a standardized or controlled vocabulary. Every single year they update and add terms as our language has evolved. You might be able to find what you're looking for by just searching, but sometimes it helps to use the MeSH browser and find out how your topic is indexed. Remember our senior citizen example? If we search elderly, we see the descriptor for aged. If you're doing your research on someone over the age of 65, you might find results under seniors, but you'll find a lot more under aged. This also works for terms that have changed. Irritable colon used to be the accepted terminology, but now the term irritable bowel syndrome is preferred. If you're doing your search and you're struggling to find the proper words for your topic, try searching in the MeSH browser to help you find what you're looking for. Also, many of the medical-based databases, including PubMed, Medline, and Nursing and Allied Health have thesauruses in them with MeSH terminology. This can help you build your search terms. Now that you know the difference between original research and peer review and MeSH terminology, let's try searching. There are some great databases I would recommend for your search. My favorites are Medline, PubMed, and Nursing and Allied Health. They are all similar in how they function and are medical-based. Let's take a look at Medline. The Medline search interface may seem similar to some other databases. I'm going to put in my terms. Today we'll be using plant-based diet and obesity. Notice how I'm putting plant-based diet into my search using quotation marks. This is how I tell the database to search the string of words as a phrase. I see 67 results right away. However, before diving into those results, I'm going to look at my filters on the left-hand side of the page. First, I'm going to select scholarly peer-reviewed journals. This gives me 65 results. Next, I'm going to change my years to the past 10. In the medical field, it is normal to limit to the past 10 years for results. This gives me 52. My other filters include linked full text, which is great if I don't have time to do an interlibrary loan to get the paper, source types, right now it's only academic journals, but sometimes these databases may have books, reports, trade publications, or even conference proceedings. Subject major headings are other ways I could search this topic. I'm going to ignore these right now. Publication is just journals that this is pulling from. This can be helpful if you're trying to find an article from a specific journal. Publisher is who's publishing the journals. I usually ignore this one as well. Language is an interesting filter. Research is done worldwide, so you might do research on a topic that's well-researched in Chinese or Russian and get lots of those articles. If you're a beginner, you may only want English articles. If you're an advanced researcher, selecting English-only articles could be bringing bias into your research. You could be missing out on valuable articles because you only want English. Age is great if you're searching for a specific age group, as is gender. Geography can be useful if you want articles from a specific location. However, again, be cautious with this limiter. If I'm doing a paper on breastfeeding in Louisiana and filter out articles that don't mention Louisiana, I could be missing out on, on an article discussing breastfeeding in the South in general. Once I'm happy with my filters, then I can take a look at my articles. I'm going to select articles that are relevant to me. In this example, I'm using the Broad Study, a randomized control trial using whole food plant-based diet in the community for obesity, isomic heart disease, or diabetes. I can see my authors and what university they're at, the journal, date, volume, issue, and pages. I can see the mesh terms, and those are all hyperlinked. I can literally click on those and use them to search. I have my abstract, it fits into an original research format with the background methods, results, conclusions. If I open the article, I can download the PDF. On the right hand side of the page, it even says original article. On the right side of this record, I can see a set of tools. I can save it to Google Drive or create a folder. I can email it to someone and I can cite it. 
Now a word of caution. This is a computer generated citation. It is not perfect. This is a starting point if citations scare you, but you will have to edit this for it to be correct. There's a specific way to cite a journal in AMA and this auto generated citation is not usually it. Use it as a starting point and fix what needs to be fixed. AMA requires you to shorten the journal title. There's a link on the NFS 4021 research guide that can help you with that under citation help. You can also send this article to someone like your professor using the permalink option. Do not use the link at the top of the page. It is session dependent and will go away after you close the page. I also want to quickly point out at the top of this database, there's the MeSH 2020 thesaurus you can explore. Another database is Nursing and Allied Health Source. It is a different interface, but the search is still similar. If I enter plant-based diet and obesity and select peer reviewed, I get 388 results. It also has similar filtering tools on the left hand side of the page. Filtering 10 years, I get 298 results. One different filter is document type. This can help me filter out of other articles that are published in peer reviewed journals like lit reviews and opinion pieces. I can filter to just feature or article if I wanted and I can start exploring. It can be a little more difficult to tell the difference between original research versus a review article in this database, but when I download the PDF on the top right of the page, it's easier to read. I like this database because on the right side of the page, under the record, there's related items. We don't have access to all these articles, but it can be a great place to find related articles on your topic, and we can always do an interlibrary loan. We tend to ignore the right side of the page because this is where ads are normally, but in this database, that's not something you have to worry about. The final database I want to show you today is PubMed. This database is through the National Library of Medicine. It can be the easiest place to do your search. If I do my same search, plant-based diet and obesity, and filter by year, I get 56 results. I like that it filters by article type though because you can keep it journal article, but you can also select clinical trial, which are always original research. The articles in here are sometimes better labeled, so you might see review right away. For this example, I'm going to select clinical trial. I can find the full text by selecting full text at the top. Not all of these articles will be full text, which means you may need to put in a free interlibrary loan to get the article. Once I click the link, the article pulls up. The PubMed citation feature is also computer generated and is not usually correct. Another tip about PubMed is that I can scroll down to see related articles or articles that have mentioned this article in some way. All research is connected. Going back to the guide. The last tab is on citation help. I was terrified to do my citations when I was in your shoes. However, they don't have to be scary. Think of a citation as the mailing address for your paper. There's a specific mailing address for using AMA. Here's an AMA quick guide and also those journal title abbreviation links I mentioned earlier. That's a general overview of how to do a search, mesh, and the difference between original and peer-reviewed articles. If you ever want to get in touch with me, please select email me or to make an appointment, you can select schedule appointments. These appointments will be through Zoom. Here you can select any date or time that works for you. I do ask that you give me as many details about what you're working on before our meeting so that I have time to look up your research question. This is connected to my calendar, so if I have free time, it is yours. I will send you a link to meet with me before our appointments. If you need help, just let me know. Don't be afraid to reach out if you have a question. My job is literally to help you out and I'm only a Zoom meeting away. I will not be back on campus this semester and will be out from around Thanksgiving until March. So if I'm out and you need help, any of the librarians at LSU Library can help you. They are a fantastic group of humans and love helping students. Thank you.